Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and actually welcome to update 26.1 the Star Fusion and Brown Dwarfs update so this is uh, pretty unexpected I didn't hear anything about this um, from everything I've seen so yeah this is uh, quite a surprise I was not expecting to see an update um, for a few weeks yet so that was um, pretty pretty cool that we've um, seen this out so yeah Brown Dwarf transitions we've made a significant improvement to the simulated transitions of gas giants into Brown Dwarfs and stars because if you um, if anyone who's been around for a while if you remember back when update 24 came out, the way gas giants turned into like brown dwarfs, like they, they used to just heat up and stay at a permanent temperature. But in update 24, that didn't work anymore. And even if you gave it enough mass, it would still cool down. It wouldn't retain any heat like they used to. So it looks like that has come back now, um, which is really, really cool. So we've got a new simulation to check out as well. So we'll be um, checking it out um, briefly as well. More color customization. The color of water on all planets and the color of vegetation on Earth is now customizable. So... The colour of water has returned. We can do it on any planets now. Because I believe before it was only on Earth. And then it got removed from the game. So I was thinking. Maybe it's just like a test to see how it works. So it looks like we finally got the water customization added into the game. Which is awesome. I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy that for creating objects now. Um, there's also some laser improvements. Just laser presets and stuff um, like that. But yeah, I've got the full details of the update here. So there's also... Um, yes, we've got the new simulation. Um, they also simulate an object's internal fusion power. So, um, a function of its mass and composition, which is used to drive the temperature of stars and brown dwarfs. This property can be found in surface, energy flow, energy absorption rate, fusion power. We'll have to see if we can find that. So, yeah, then there's a new laser thing. Um, implemented a new mass distribution for rocky planets and gas giants. Black holes now properly visually distort gas particles and visual glows. Revised Earth base surface colors. Okay, so Earth's had a little change. Uh, gas giants, brown dwarfs, and stars now smoothly transition between each other as a function of their overall mass. We're going to have to try that by adding mass to one. Uh, this fixes an issue where gas giants were given enough mass to turn into stars and it result in a 0k black star. Yeah, I remember that. They just turned into blacked out stars. Uh, added two new colour customization options for surface, water, and Earth's vegetation. That is really, really cool. Uh, and then uh, the rest of it is mainly um, just bug fixes and then that new simulation. So not the most... Um, stuff compared to the last update but yeah i think this is really really cool so we'll close that for now um what do we want to do first actually no no i'm gonna try i think i'll try the simulation first so we'll try the new sim uh, once this menu opens right let's just get rid of that all right uh bye bye all right simulations uh so it was a guide was it a guide guides is it which wait where is it um da -da -da. tidal forces i'm acting like a complete fool where, where is it it's um, let me see if I can just find the simulation. Okay, so guide science. Okay, so science. Uh, and our gas giants failed stars. Okay, so this is the new. This is the new thing. Okay, cool. Right, so Jupiter and our sun are essentially made out of the same material, primarily only hydrogen. Yeah, hydrogen and helium. Um, so why is the sun so hot and bright, and Jupiter is not? The answer is fusion. Yeah, Jupiter doesn't have any fusion process uh, going on. Right, select Jupiter. Right, so this will show us the new stuff in action, actually. So we want to go to properties. Right, surface. So energy... Yeah, that's a little... That's quite hard to see if you don't know where you're looking. Right. So most of Jupiter's energy is coming from the sun, which lives about half a quintillion watts of power, about 500 million nuclear power plants to Jupiter's surface. Here we go. So this is the stellar power from the sun. Right. Cool. Next. Okay. Fusion power is zero. Jupiter doesn't have enough mass to generate fusion in its interior, so its fusion power is zero. Yep, so that's that's cool. Right, I think I remember this menu when the supernova thing came out. Um, even with all that solar power, Jupiter is pretty chilly at this distance from the sun. So yeah, pretty cold, around minus 160. We can warm it up by adding energy from fusion. Right. Select the overview tab. So we're going to 50 Jupiters of mass. Right. So 50 Jupiters. Okay, the more massive Jupiter will heat over time, eventually it will start getting hotter. We can see the temperatures going up. So 50, 50 Jupiters of mass starting to spice things up here. Right. So now fusion power is actually warmed up. Rate of energy generated by objects internal fusion. Oh, yes. Okay, so Jupiter's internal fusion power is now over a zeta watt, more than a thousand times the external power it receives from the sun. This indicates that Jupiter has become a brown dwarf. Okay, so now we're entering the brown dwarf stages. Right, has become a brown dwarf. A category of objects between star or gas giants and stars. Heck yeah. Uh, brown dwarfs have a mass between 13 and 80 Jupiter masses. Okay, this size creates internal temperatures high enough for uh, deuterium fusion. A chemical process that releases energy by combining that word again with protons to form helium. 
yeah, I remember doing this in school years ago. Yeah, we did fusion and fission and all of those energies. And yeah, it's all about atoms combining and making new elements. Obviously, two hydrogen elements or two hydrogen atoms creates a helium atom because it's element number one on the periodic table and helium is element number two. So when you collide two hydrogens, it makes a helium. If that makes sense, it's quite complicated, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Right, overview. Uh, so now we're going to our 100 Jupiters. Okay, so let's just do that. So as we increase it, it's going to increase in temperature. So as you can see, so now, now we'll just put it straight to 100 now. Voila. So that goes straight into a star. Okay, so it pops into a bigger object. Right. Our brown dwarf has become a star. At masses um, above roughly 80 times the mass of Jupiter, the external temperature of an object is high enough to fuse hydrogen into helium. Yeah, so the hydrogen atoms are bashing into each other, making helium atoms. An even more powerful process than the deuterium fusion. Hydrogen fusion powers main sequence stars like the sun. So now if we go back to our... Whereabouts is it? God, I don't, I don't know where that button is. Um, is it energy flows? Is it no, no. Where, where did that button go? Ah, here we go. So fusion power. So it's gone up. Look at that. Right. So let's move on. Right. Is that it? Okay, we're done. All right. Here's a system with. Uh, oh wait. Here, here's a system with one gas giant Jupiter, one brown dwarf, and one small star, plus our own Earth and Sun for scale. We can compare their sizes in chart mode. Oh yes, I love doing chart modes. Right. So here we are. So we've got good old Earth. Down here, I love doing these size comparisons, right? So we've got Earth. We can see its colours look updated, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, there's Jupiter. Then we've got Brown Dwarf. And then moving on, we've got a Red Dwarf, Low Mass Star, Red Dwarf. And then we have the Sun. Let's check that out, right? So moving on. All right, oh, what are we doing? A view. Are only in chart mode? Yeah, I've already spec'd out my own toolbar. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just by changing objects mass, you can turn its internal fusion on and off, creating a... Uh, diverse array of object types, temperatures, and appearances. Heck yeah. Right. Uh, is that it? Uh, close. Uh, we'll turn off chart mode. I think that is the end of the tutorial. So yeah, pretty cool. It teaches you, obviously, um, how to find the new options. Let's see if I can find it now. So it's uh, composition. I think it's composition. Please be composition. Where, where is it? Uh, energy flow. Energy flow. Where, where is it? It's a really hard little button to find. Temp is it temperature? Yes, temperature. Okay, so energy flow. So here we go. So press this, energy absorption rate, and there you go. That's how you find all of the new stats. We can see fusion power. The sun has got some pretty, uh, pretty good fusion power going on there. So there it is, tidal power. So there we are. Okay, that's really cool. Right, so that's all of the star stuff. But we'll do it again manually in our own simulation. Uh, I didn't want to click open. I want to click new. So we'll go to new. We'll add in a... Yeah, we'll do good old Neptune, of course. Right, um, which one should we use? So let's use let's use the dark spot Neptune. We haven't used that in a while. Um, so let's just close that. Right, um, we have to manually drag this open. Right, uh, Neptune, Neptune, Neptune. Right, here we go. So the dark spot version of Neptune. So let's place that in here. Oh, yes, you beauty. Right, now, what we're going to do with Neptune is we're just going to buff it straight to one Jupiter, just to begin with. So we're going to make it one Jupiter. Uh, we don't need that locked. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to increase the mass, and we're going to slowly watch... It's this temperature, so it's just times two, actually, make it a little faster. Right, so once we get to about, yeah, nine Jupiters, we'll start just doing this. Now, we look on this average surface temperature. This should start to increase as we add more mass. Oh, what's happened here? Neptune, you're broken. We've broken it. This is gas. This is a gas giant right here. Hydrogen, 100%. Oh, no, it's broken. Okay, there we go. So we've added it back. So that's just a weird glitch. But now we can see. Uh, let's just reset it to 10 Jupiters, right? So we can see the temperature did go up there, but let's just see if it works again now. Right, so I don't want to turn into a rocky planet. I want to keep it as a gas. So we're going to increase the mass. So 12 Jupiters. Uh, so it seems like it glitches around 12 Jupiters like it, because I think if we just pause, I think, if I remember right, all of the big rocky planets we used to make, like Big Rock, I believe they used to max out at 12... Um, so if I just search up Big Rock, I think I still got Big Rock. Yeah, so here it is. So the really, really old Big Rock here. Right. So if I remember right, this is 12 point, or this this could go up to 12.9 if I tried. If I, if you went to 13, it would break it. Yeah. So it, yeah. So I'm guessing this little glitch we just saw is involved with it, with it being 12 and 13. So that's why that happened. So I think it's just some little glitch there. But yeah, now we're above 13. It just turns back to a gas giant again. So yeah, we'll keep click and play, uh, increase the mass um, like so, and then we'll slowly watch this and we see the temperatures starting to increase. If we go to um, is it sur no, yeah, it's surface. Okay, energy flow. So. Where is it? Uh, fusion power is starting to spice up. So 9.6. Keep an eye on that. So we go back here. Increase it again. And we can see the temperature of Neptune is starting to warm up dramatically now. So we're going to 18, 19, 20 Jupiters. And now we can see that temperature is skyrocketing into the uh, positive values. Now, there we go. Look at that. So if we go back to... Oh God, it's surface. Right. Fusion is now 25.6 EW. 
Right, so now there we go. So you can see Neptune 100 degrees. Uh, let's just see how hot it goes. So how hot are we going to go with a bit of fusion? Okay, so it maxes out at about 220 at the moment. But obviously, if we increase more and more mass, it's just going to keep going up. So we'll go up to about 30 Jupiters now. We'll manually input that. So 30 Jupiters. It goes up even more. Then we'll go to 40 Jupiters. Goes into the 400s, almost the 500s. We go to 50 Jupiters. There you go. So around 50 Jupiters is where you start to see the increase. But look at Neptune now. Look how that dark spot makes the clouds go red. That is awesome. I've never tried warming this guy up. Look at that, right? To get some cool visuals of this um, bad boy as well. So uh, 640, we'll go to 60. 700, 800. Okay, so once you get above 50, that's where it really starts being a party. So we can see, yeah, that's really, really getting hot. Uh, 70. So 70s where this is this is kind of where this is kind of what brown dwarfs used to be like in the old version. Once you put an object at a certain mass, it usually always warmed up to around this sort of temperature. So we'll um, keep increasing. I'll do it manually this time, or just um, automatically by clicking the button. Oh, oh, black star. Oh no, the glitch is. Ba oh, they said they didn't. They say they patched this. <laughs> oh no. So where was it? Um, uh, that they, they said something about zero K stars. So we've done something bad. We have done a very bad thing. Um. That wasn't supposed to happen, I don't think. What if we just put it up to 2.7? Okay, so it's not zero, I guess. But oh dear. Okay, so here we go. So it said, um, gas giants, brown dwarfs, and stars now smoothly transition between each other as a function of their overall mass. This fixes an issue where gas giants, given enough mass, were turning to stars, result in a 0k black star. I mean, it isn't 0k, but we got 2.7k black star. I'm guessing it's the same glitch. But yeah, there we go. So, but we still saw the process of yeah with Neptune. Uh, as soon as we added more and more mass, it really did increase. Um, we will just uh, do that again. I want to see if that glitch keeps occurring or if it's just a one-off. So I will just manually input all values this time. So we'll go back to Neptune. Uh, place, please. There we go. Uh, lock on to Neptune. Right. Uh, zoom in. Right. So we're just going to put you straight to 50. Uh, unlock that as well. So straight at 50. This should start to uh, yeah 50 Jupiters. So that's going to obviously skyrocket in temperature there. There we go. Maybe we were running the simulation too fast as well. We'll just slow it down. Right, so then we'll go to uh, we'll go to 60. So that increases it more, like we saw. We'll go to 80. No, no. Okay, okay. So it seems like this can be a reoccurring glitch. And okay, never mind. So yeah, we saw, we've seen the process of the um, stuff though. But now, onto the rocky planet changes. Because that's from obviously another selling point of this update. Right, Earth. We'll start off with Earth. Because we want to check out the... Okay, so the surface colours of Earth are apparently slightly in a different now, so let's just look underneath. Right, okay. That looks more green, I want to say. Maybe a bit of North America up here, near, um, I think it's Maryland and New York State up here. They look a little more green, I want to say. It looks like a California, Nevada. I want to say that's a little more sandy uh, over in Europe. Maybe a bit of France is a little more green. I mean, I'm just going off what I can remember, so I'm not entirely sure. Don't take these as facts. This is just predictions. Now we're looking South Pole's got that weird ice glitch. Australia, maybe a bit more green on Australia there. I'm not sure. New Zealand, how are we doing over here? Let's go to um, there. Let's just rotate it around. I think a lot of Asia looks a little more sandy than it should be. I'm not too sure about that. Um, how are we looking? We've got um, Japan there. But yeah, there we go. So the Earth's had a slight little change. But now, onto the other stuff. Vegetation colour. Oh, yes. Look at that. So this is in the main game. This isn't a test build. Remember, this is in the main game. You can access right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. And liquid water color. Oh, yes. It's finally... The finally ocean colors are back in the game. Yes. Look at that. Awesome stuff. So that is um, now in here. So, yeah. Colored water. So click play. There you go. Looking good. So now what I'm going to do is, like I tried to do in the test build, I'm going to try and build a new version of my good old planet Pascal. So we'll go with random and rocky. We'll just go off completely scratch here. Right, random rocky. Hi. So I'm going to put you already on good mass. Uh, right, so I want to go straight to atmosphere. I want an atmosphere. So where are we? Uh, atmosphere, atmosphere. Where, where's the atmosphere? Stats, the composition, um, surface. I'm still, it's still, I still struggle to navigate this menu sometimes. Oh, man. Right, I'm still not used to it. Right, uh, we'll go just one ATM. That's fine. There we go. Oh, yeah. So when you uh, add and remove atmospheres, you notice as well, it slowly disappears the less atmosphere pressure you have. So obviously if I increase it again, the atmosphere gets brighter and stronger and the clouds shut more. I think that's a really, really cool change. There we go. So there we are. So usually it appears around 1 ATM. You get all the normal clouds and stuff, right? And the clouds start off as white clouds now. They're not the same color as the atmosphere. So that's pretty cool. Right. Liquid water color. Yeah, it works on any planet now. So I want light blue liquid water. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, high elevation. I'm going to have as like a dark sort of reddish color. 
Okay, um, and then I'll, yeah, a lot, a lot of sort of red sort of surfaces, like just sort of darker red. Um, where is our... We need to close and reopen the menu to change our atmosphere. There we are. Our atmosphere, I want you as a beautiful green. There we go. Clouds, I... What clouds? White clouds. They don't look too white, but yeah, white clouds. Oh, yes. And I want to increase the water a bit, so... How's that looking, uh... Still weird how the water works. I don't like how the water just floods up everywhere. I prefer to have massive parts of land and little oceans. How, how, if I just try reset it. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's looking slightly better, but it's still quite a lot of... Uh... Ooh, I don't know. Uh, I do want to change the surface a bit more. I want to have a dark green on the low elevation. So something like that. Uh, actually, I want high as white. Oh, that's a little too much white, actually. Uh, can I have a bit of a sort of reddish... But yeah, there's just a rough example, though. So, yeah, city, you can also see, um, not city lights, atmosphere. Also, we already had clouds, already had that. But liquid water, look how much difference changing the water colour makes. I mean, it'd normally be around this sort of shade, wouldn't it? But now we can have any colour we want, and we can make some real exotic-looking worlds. I mean, what do you think of that? That's just a rough example of a Pascal build um, right there. But, yeah, it's um, looking pretty good. I'm liking it. I do think, yeah, okay, so keep it as white, darker red. So something like that. I mean, I'm not going to spend all day trying to do it, but yeah, there we go. So there's a nice, nice rough example of um, Pascal there. Oh, God, that green atmosphere with the light blue oceans, the red surface. Very exotic, but yeah, I love it. I think it looks great. And then obviously to uh, finishing touches, city lights on, open the menu up. I want light blue lights. Uh, I always want them on, absolutely. If we look behind, there's my white blue lights. Oh, yeah, nice big patch of them there as well. I'll, I'll save this actually as an example. I can build off it at a later date, but I just call it Pascal 26.1 because that's our update version. So enter that in. There we go. Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it a good old save. Let's uh, get a save of that. So yeah, there we go. That's a good, nice example of our new uh, ocean customization and all that. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, you gotta remember as well the vegetation colors only work on Earth as of now. Maybe you could probably sneak in a modded object and try and get it to work on that as well. I don't know. But, yeah, that could be quite good. Uh, contrast as well. Does that... Yeah, okay, so contrast. Obviously, um, I think... I don't remember. I'm not sure if that was in the last update. I, I think it may have been, but I never used it. So, yeah, you can change the uh, contrast of your objects as well. So, yeah, there is um, Pascal 26.1, guys. So, yeah, there we go. And then other than that, uh, we've done the gas giants. Uh, there's some stuff in the lasers. I mean, we don't really use the lasers, but, yeah, here we are. So... There's something new in here. I think it's Wave Maker. So let's try Wave Maker. So, whoa, okay, what's going on here? Whoa, that's weird. Right. So, yeah, this is new, this Wave Maker. So where are we? Um, lasers, lasers, lasers. Wave Maker laser preset, uh, making use of push water setting. Okay, this preset sets power level at zero, and you can use the laser simply to create waves in the ocean. Oh, okay, right. So there we go, creating waves of land, more like than uh, water, but that's pretty cool. Okay. So that obviously all just goes back to normal um, as well there. So if we shoot the land, it goes a little weird as well. But yeah, there we go. So that's um, the laser stuff. And I believe that is all of the laser stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, so that yeah, that's the uh, only new option on there, I believe. So yeah, there we go. But guys, but that does it for update 26.1. So yeah, let me know you guys' thoughts down below in the comments. I'd say awesome stuff that we finally have the ocean colours. So when I go back to my quality star system now, I can... Um, I can change the oceans and stuff, so that is going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, guys, yeah, let me know what you think of this update down below. I think this is really, really cool. So um, yeah, there we go. That is all of that. And yeah, um, let's see if we can go for 30 likes on today's uh, video, guys, for update 26.1 now. Yeah, 26.1. So yeah, this was the Brown Dwarf, Star Fusion and Brown Dwarfs update. So yeah, the, uh, November the 20th, uh, update 26.1. So awesome stuff indeed. And yeah, guys, with that all said and done, let's see if we can go for, yeah, 30 likes. Uh, subscribe for new helps on the journey to 18,000 subscribers, guys. And yeah, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.